Um, all right, let's get into those final thoughts on the Elite 11. You should know by now, if you listen to this network at all, that that event for me every single year um, is far more – I go out there for far more reasons to, than to see footballs being thrown, right? I think the more and more I do this, the more and more I rely on – at that position, okay? At other positions, height, weight, speed, give it to me. Height, weight, speed, decent film will make you a great football player. But at the quarterback position, it's not just about anymore how hard you can throw the football, how great you can throw the football, how layered you can throw the football, how all those good things. It's not about any of that for me anymore. I mean, it's it's those things. That event for me is to check the physical boxes of can you make every throw? And all 20 invitees normally should be able to do that. There was one or two quarterbacks out there that I didn't really think had no business being out there, but the rest of them all make NFL throws. They all throw the ball exceptionally well every single year. It is not about that for me. Now, other people will go out there and they'll they'll write all these articles about, oh, so-and-so's ball looked great today, so-and-so. They're all, all their balls look great, okay? As the film guy, as the football dude that you guys trust to give you evaluations and opinions about football players, every single one of those guys that goes out of L.A. every year can throw the piss out of it. So just put that by the wayside. The rest of this stuff, there are some differences. Don't get me wrong. There's some separations. But the main point for us to go out there it's part of the reaction, right? Um, it's, you know, seeing how you react to coaching, okay? It's seeing how you respond to your uh, competitors around you. It's seeing how you interact with other people. It's seeing how you approach the game. It's about how you compete. It's about how you attack drills, right? It's about all these things while also checking the physical boxes, okay? Can he make every throw in the book? And while he's doing it, are there any things in his fundamentals or anything that leads us to believe that he might not be able to sustain that success or uh, repeat that success or have consistency with that success. That's what we are there to do. Physical boxes, intangible boxes. How many of those can we check and know for a fact when we leave, this guy's got this, right? So with that being said, let's talk about each one of these commitments, right? Obviously, Georgia had two out there. Everyone wants to talk about both of them. So we're going to talk about both of them. I think we did a great job of this while we're out there in L.A., if you haven't gone back and watched those shows, I would recommend that you do. I thought they were good, some some really good work. And I want to do satellite shows like that more and more often. But, of course, you guys know you got to support them, right? So go back, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment, do all that good stuff. Do that thing, that same thing right here on this channel or on this uh, video as well. I know I've done a bad job already, 15 minutes in the show, forgetting to tell you to do that. Um, but, hey, I did now. So hit that thumbs up button. Let's talk Rayola. Uh, beautiful ball absolutely beautiful beautiful football um never play like never plays with tremendous amounts of gas okay what do i mean by that most of these live arm football players most of these guys that like are one of one throwers people talk about them since they were you know in ninth tenth grade about how great the ball comes out guys like dan orlovsky tell their dad when they're 14 their first round draft picks from number one overall right all these guys most of them the ball explodes at all times unless they're throwing a deep ball or unless they're throwing a layered ball. Um, It doesn't, it doesn't seem catchable for mediocre receivers or anybody less than premier wide receivers. When those quarterbacks let it rip, I never felt like Rayola's ball appeared to be hard to catch this week. And that is a valuable skill set. Okay. Because it leads to less drop balls. It leads to more runnable footballs after the catch because the receivers are comfortable. Okay. It leads to, I don't even know how to explain it other than to say it this way. Every ball Dylan Rayola threw this week looked like it was meant to be caught. That makes sense. No wobbles, no, no, uh, no suddenness to it. It doesn't appear heavy. Like Gunnar Stockton's ball is very, very heavy. You catch his ball. And it feels like it punched you in the in the hands when it gets to you. Okay, Rayola's ball arrives eloquently, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that is a skill set. That is something that is valued on the next level, especially when we start mixing into, hey, fitting balls into windows and stuff like that, on top of the fact that he's got the gas. right? He's absolutely got the gas when he needs it. Um, the other thing that I learned this week, and it's probably something I should have known you know, prior to going out there, but he's relatively new to this position. I mean, like, very very new to this position this is a guy that didn't start playing quarterback until ninth grade like that's wild to me that's wild to me that we just pick it up and we're that naturally gifted at it first of all um but it's also wild to me to sit here and think that hey this guy's only got four years of college or you know high school football underneath his belt 
Um, and despite the fact that his daddy was a pro ball player and despite the fact that, you know, he probably grew up in NFL locker rooms and despite the fact that Uncle Maddie is Uncle Maddie and all that good stuff, um, it's still a 10,000 hour theory. Like you still have to go out and play to, to be comfortable. And I see that some in his game. I see some uh, unrefinedness, if you will. Some, I'm gifted. I'm going to do it this way because I can get it done this way right now. You know what I'm saying? And that right now changes when you get to the next level. You have to do it that way, not your way. And if you do, you can't do it that way, then we got to learn how to do it that way. Does that make sense? Um, so, yeah, definitely that right there. The deep ball. I went back and watched the footage today. Absolutely immaculate. Like, I don't even know. Russell Wilson throws the best deep ball in the NFL, I've always believed, because it is a super high arcing football. It comes down, nose down. Okay, that ball arrives straight down like that. Okay, um, that is Dylan Rayola's deep ball. It shows up like that. Okay, it shows up nose down, um, and it, it's in the air for a very, very long time as a, a byproduct of his arm strength, of course. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's touch on every throw. And the life did show up when it wanted to. I thought he threw one ball really hard all week, and it was during the pro day. He's rolling to his left. He throws a comeback. And, I mean, I'm standing right there. The footage is – I mean, he's throwing basically into our camera. That ball arrived. That ball jumped. It sounded violent when it got there. It, it was like, all right, that ball was pissed on. Pardon my language. That was the only ball he threw all week that I felt that was like that, though, um, for good or worse. Uh, but I think that, you know, on the next level, we're going to have to throw comebacks like that every time. We're going to have to throw slants like that every time. We're going to have to throw, uh, you know, digs like that into the second window every single time. He's got the lively arm to do it. Um, just didn't do it on a, on a consistent basis this week, which, again, catchable. That was all that was mattering this week. You're throwing with brand-new receivers, all that good stuff, catchable. Um, I do want to know, what is Dylan Rayola like inside of structure, Okay. What is he going to be like when he is told, this is how we do this, and it's not something that he's comfortable with? Can he do that? And, and what do I mean by that? I've already told this story, but we probably have some new listeners in here tonight. So I'm going to tell it again. The very first drill of the week. I mean, the very first drill of the week. At the Elite 11, Dylan Rayola and the quarterbacks were asked to put their feet stagnant. Keep your feet square. Don't move them. Take one step, two steps to the target, throw the ball, okay? Your lower half should be, like, very solidified. You should be very calm. This should almost look like we are just playing robot catch, like you are very stagnant. We're trying to see your motion. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to video your motion, see what you got going on, all that good stuff from the, its base platform, right? The Like, block A before we get to block Z where we're actually playing football. First rep, he does it like coach wants him to. You know, step one, bring the, the front foot over to it. Okay, nice and solid, feet quiet, rip the football. Throws the ball on the track. Does it again, takes a second rep, throws it on the track again. Claps his hands, you know, dang it, like all quarterbacks do. Gets back in line, gets back into the drill, and then starts to add kind of like a, like a hop, puts, starts to put rhythm into the drill. Not the drill. Okay, so does it matter? No, to a lot of people it doesn't. Okay, but you, I, I said this the other day. You guys, a lot of you, I mean, we, we got some, we're starting to get some different fan bases moving in here, but a lot of you guys that listen to this are Georgia fans. You played a program that is all about those things. It's all about doing all eight reps on the power clean. It's all about finishing through the line during sprints. It's all about processing your reads correctly it's all about doing it the way you were taught and coached it's all about uh all the little things required to be great at football that's why you are who you are that's why georgia is where they are because they do all of the little things the right way while also having immensely talented football player players excuse me have the best players teach them to do all of the right things all of the time okay so that, that's my question i know he's one of one talented he is by far the most talented football player in america no doubt. No, not a doubt in my mind. We confirmed that this week with our own eyes. Um, there are some boxes. There are still some boxes left to check, as are with the next person. Let's talk about Ryan Puglisi. Um, I think far more, far too many of these conversations about Puga are started with the intangibles. He's a great kid, all that good stuff. We're going to talk about that. But I want to talk about the dude's abilities, okay? That is a football playing SOB. 
That dude, to a man, I've said this twice tonight, to a man, this one was in the notes earlier, was at ad-lib, to a man, I always go out there and I ask these quarterbacks, hey, who's got what, you know? Who's the best athlete? Who's got the best arm? Who's your guy? Who you like? You know, who's a dude? Who's the alpha? All these questions. Every single one that I asked, who's got the biggest arm? Puglisi. Medium. Puglisi. Dude can throw it a country mile. So he's immensely talented. 6'3", 225, got a good stroke, all that good stuff. He can absolutely throw the football. He throws missiles. And I know based on his tape, I didn't see a ton of it this week. Thought this is the only place that he really struggled. The touch. There's not a lot of there was not a lot of touch in his game this week, but I know there is a ton of it on Friday nights. If you go watch the film of Puglisi, there is a ton of touch throws. In fact, there's one where he scrambled to in his right and he just kind of like it almost looks like a a, a Steph Curry floater, like uh, uh you know, from the from the free throw line or a Trey Young floater from the free throw line, super high, comes right back down and drops in. Um, I know the dude can play with pace. I know the dude can play with some uh finesse, if you will. I will say this. There are no excuses, but I'm about to make one. All right. One thing people don't realize about the Elite 11, and I probably wouldn't realize this unless I was one of these guys that always, I'm just, I'm a loser like this. I just notice all the little things that don't matter to a lot of people. And when I say this, they're going to be like, oh my God, look at this excuse making mofo. Those people that think this is an excuse have never, ever, ever thrown a football, not consistently. Those balls they gave those dudes, they they gave those guys brand new Elite 11 balls from Nike about a week and a half out from being out there, okay? So some guys, Puglisi was telling me, had their balls professionally treated. They sent them off to professionals. They had to mud them up, scuff them up, have them ready, like game-worn type stuff um, by the time they got there. Hold on. I got, I got something to show you. So, these are NFL balls. I don't know if you can tell, but this ball, this ball looks brand new, okay? It's not quite brand new, but it basically is, okay? This ball looks brand new. This ball, a little darker, okay? Nose of it, a little more rubbed off. This ball, this ball spins like nobody's business, okay? We hit the camera on the way back. This ball, this ball struggles to get through the air when it's brand new, okay? So, that's all I'm talking about, all right? And basically, Puglisi had a ball that was not rubbed up. No pause. All right. He had a ball that was kind of tough to throw. All right. So all week when you look at the footage, my man ain't throwing ducks, but my man throwing balls that are not showing the dot. You know what I mean? Where you throw a spiral and that thing's actually showing the nose of the ball the whole time. It wasn't that. But the dude's arm was so damn strong that he was just throwing through spirals or throwing through ducks. Okay. Balls that weren't spinning professionally. Um, So, yeah, I mean – we can blame the balls. I'm going to blame the balls a little bit. How's this camera look? It's not terrible. You know, it's not terrible. So, yeah, the balls weren't rubbed up. Some were. Some balls were nice and perfect. Some balls were brand new out of the box. Some balls still had the uh, unique shape a brand new ball has coming out of the bag. Some balls were smooth. I said it this way in our Elite 11 article. Actually, I got to talk about this. I have personal biases, okay, as a scout. And it's important if you're going to do these things to not only identify them, but tell them to your audience. Okay. So I'm going to tell you something right now about me. I am always, 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 always going to favor the player that does everything right. And that has to do everything right to be great. Ryan Puglisi is immensely talented. Like I told you, God gifted him too. He's 6'3", 225 pounds. He can throw a 75 yards. He can do everything he needs to as a a college quarterback. He's immensely talented. But Ryan Puglisi is a does-everything-right guy. From the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep, he does everything right. And it is not just lip service. I think too often kids can be in, uh, you know, their phones responding to uh, reporters. They could be on the phone responding to reporters. They can be on Twitter talking their uh, inspirational stuff. Okay, they can do all of these things. But a lot of it's fugazi until you pull up on kids and you find out who they are. That's what we did this week. We found out who that guy is. That is not lip service. That dude is 100% that guy when it comes to I'm a competitionaholic. I love doing everything right. I'm a dry reps guy. When the guy in front of me is doing work, I'm going to do the shadow rep behind him. 
Okay, I'm going to show up early. I'm going to leave late guy. All of those things are in spades with Ryan Puglisi. I said it this way in our final Elite 11 article before we left California, and I, I think this is the best way to put it. I don't know if Dylan Rayo is quite ready to lead at Georgia, but he's damn sure ready to play. That guy can walk in right now and play college football. But I don't know if he's ready to lead a college football room. Conversely, I don't know if Ryan Puglisi is ready to play college football at the University of Georgia. But he's damn sure ready to lead a room. Okay, so it's good. And it's, it's a Georgia first world problem to have that you took both of these football players because though they are both immensely talented, they are immensely talented for two very different reasons. Okay, if Dylan Rayola were a one-of-one thrower of the football, Ryan Puglisi is a one-of-one do-everything-right guy. It ain't going to be some walkaway competition. And I, I that's that's what I learned this week, that, yes, that guy, wow, super talented. That guy, wow, something about him. Have you ever heard about the it factor, guys? It's something that everyone's searching for, everyone. And it's a lot of these things. It's a lot of do other people believe in you? Are you on time all the time? Are you dependable? Are you immensely talented? Okay, and here's the deal. If you are that guy, if you are that talented, none of this shit matters. None of it. None of it. You can show up late. You can do everything for so long. You can do it for so long. It just depends on how immensely talented you are, period. Okay, so we can sit here and talk about all these intangible traits, and we can talk about how uh, you got to be a great human being to play at the University of Georgia, and all that is true. But they still take swings on, at every position, they take swings on talent. you got to be immensely talented, period, to play at the University of Georgia. Oh. Hey there. What you just watched was a portion of our live broadcast, Nothing But Rants, NBR, the show where I find topics that I'm oddly passionate about and I pontificate upon them. They're not hot takes, but rather takes that I'm hot about. If you want to join us live, we are live Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. here on the channel. Uh, please subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. If you like it, there's probably more in one of these windows. We'll see you next time.